Hi, my name is Tom Cross, and I'm the Director of Security Research at Landcope. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past month or so, you've heard about Heartbleed, uh, a significant security vulnerability in OpenSSL that has IT teams everywhere scrambling to patch their servers. One of the difficult things about Heartbleed uh, is that all of us found out about it when it was publicly disclosed. Uh, and then after that, we had to take steps to patch our systems. And so um, it's possible that attacks were launched against our systems before we were able to patch them. And uh, it's difficult to find out whether or not that was the case. This is a screenshot from heartbleed.com, which is the website that the people who discovered the vulnerability set up in order to communicate with the community about it. And it answers a couple questions. One of those questions is, can I detect if someone has exploited this against me? And the answer is, exploitation of this bug does not leave any trace of anything abnormal happening in the logs. So you can't just look at your server logs in order to figure out if you were targeted uh, um, using the Heartbleed vulnerability in the past. Um, another question is, has this been abused in the wild? And the answer is, we don't know. Uh, um, it's possible that somebody uh, knew about this vulnerability and used it to launch malicious attacks before uh, these people discovered it and, and got it fixed. Uh, and, and we just don't know the answer to that question. So um, here at here at Landcope, uh, we, uh, we work with NetFlow. Uh, we make a product called StealthWatch that collects NetFlow from people's networks. And it turns out that if you've been collecting NetFlow from your network, uh, that you can look at that NetFlow in order to determine whether your servers may have been attacked using the Heartbleed vulnerability. Uh, in order to understand how this works, it helps to know a little bit about how the Heartbleed attack works. This is a screenshot uh, of a Heartbleed attack tool being run against a vulnerable server. What happens is that the Heartbleed tool sends a, a particular request to the server, and the server sends back a response which includes some uh, um, information from the heap that uh, the server should not be exposing to the, uh, to the client. Uh, that information could include, uh, um, you know, details from other transactions, usernames, passwords, uh, session keys, etc. So two things to note about this. Uh, typically, um, the, the request uh, and response uh, have a particular size, and that size is the same every single time uh, the attack is run. Uh, the second thing to note is that you get a different part of the heap every single time you run the transaction. If you have a busy web server that's handling a lot of transactions, the attacker is incented to run the attack over and over and over again in order to get more and more information out of the server. And those two factors add up to uh, the attack uh, having particular characteristics uh, uh, when you when you look at it uh, in, in NetFlow. So um, this is a screenshot from our product StealthWatch of flows um, that are attacks against a, a vulnerable web server. Uh, we launched a few attacks here, and you can see that they all have particular characteristics. Uh, they all um, uh, target port 443, which is the SSL uh, port, uh, and you can see that they all have a pretty consistent client ratio of about 4.8%. Uh, that's because the requests and responses all have about the same size. Uh, you can also see, although we ran a few short attacks here, um, that we that we have some very long duration attacks, and we think that that's going to be consistent with uh, attack activity in the wild. Um, so it's important to note that that it is possible for attackers to vary the client ratio uh, because they can change the size of the request that they're that they or the the response that they're requesting. Um, and it's of course also possible for attackers to run short attacks uh, that target this vulnerability. But we think that typically attacks in the wild are going to involve uh, this uh, consistent client ratio because they're going to request the maximum size uh, of response from the server and they're typically going to run for a long period of time. To give you another example, uh, the, a company uh, known as Cloudflare set up a vulnerable server on the internet and they challenged uh, security researchers to attack that server and extract their private key from it. Uh, Robert Graham is a security researcher who uh, uh, successfully um, uh, achieved this challenge. Uh, he wrote a program called Heartleach uh, that uh, you can run against Cloudflare server and extract their private key. Um, and if you look at his blog post about uh, Heartleach, he states that in order to successfully perform this attack, you have to run uh, his, his program against the server for hours and hours. Uh, so that gives you an example of a really long flow uh, that's going to be generated as a consequence of running this attack. So StealthWatch um, is, is, a, is a behavioral anomaly detection system. It's designed to detect um, suspicious behavior on a computer network. 
Uh, and we've, we've been building that product here at Landcope for, for a long time. And we spend time thinking about uh, different kinds of network behavior that are suspicious. Uh, long flows are often suspicious. They can be indicative of a command and control channel associated with malware. Um, they can be indicative of an attempt at data exfiltration, which is really what this uh, heart bleed uh, attack consists of. And we added a, a, a security event to our product back in 2007 called Suspect Long Flow uh, that detects long flows in your in your environment and, and alarms on them so that uh, you can respond um, and so um, the reality is that we had the ability to, to detect uh, heart bleed attacks in our product uh, for years before the heart bleed vulnerability was even introduced into OpenSSL. Um, the vulnerability was introduced in 2012 uh, and it went um, uh, uh, you know as far as we know undiscovered for for two years uh, up until uh, uh, 2014 uh, in April when the vulnerability was finally publicly disclosed. And of course, even after the public disclosure, um, it probably took you uh, uh, some time to get your servers patched. And we know that attack activity began immediately. So um, the fact is that anybody with a vulnerable version of OpenSSL could have been attacked at any time between 2012 and when they patched their server. And, and the likelihood that they were attacked after uh, April 7th of 2014 is particularly high. Um, and there certainly were attacks happening in the wild. So, um, you know, if you're running a server that was vulnerable, it, it would be useful to be able to check uh, to see if, uh, if you were attacked. And if you, if you were running StealthWatch, uh, it would be possible for you to do that. And you may have, in fact, uh, uh, detected these attacks uh, using our suspect long flow alarm. Uh, in fact, uh, many of our customers were successful at, at using our product to do just that. So uh, um, I hope that uh, that information is, is useful to you.